We're done in Karbala now. And it was really amazing. The kids were amazing. And uh, now we're going to go to Najaf. But well, that's the next school where we're going and we're going to treat the kids over there. It's been very, very spiritual until now. So this year's trip to Iraq is going to be a watershed moment for us. The school in Najaf, Dar al Zahra, is having its first graduating class. And those are the kids I treated 10, 11 years ago when I first got to Najaf. And I think that is going to be my highlight this year, is seeing those kids growing up from being about five, six, now they're 17, 18 and graduating, seeing the changes that have occurred over the years. There's a few of them that I have high hopes for that they will be very, very successful once they graduate. This year with uh, Dr. Zulfikar doing our uh, sedations for us, great asset for us. Also seeing some of the growth in some of the dentists that have come for the first time and they've started off with limited experience in pediatric dentistry and now they are getting really, really comfortable doing children um, and doing multiple, multiple restorations in one go. So it, it's nice and rewarding to see that, that they're learning from the experience. What I would like to see in the future is GKF to be able to do multiple camps in a year with different people leading those camps. I think we need to train other leaders so that they can lead camps or lead groups to go to other areas or come to the same area more than once. For example, 900 children in this, in this school, we probably will see about 250, 300 and that leaves 600 that we won't be able to see. If we can make it a tri-annual trip three times a year, we might be able to get all those patients done. But on the other hand, we want to make sure that the quality of work stays high and that we're not compromising quality of work just to make the numbers look good. The importance of library in the school is that the student. So our aim is not only to teach them how to read and in Arabic also, but we have also English uh, spoken uh, classes. In the Iraqi curriculum, there is Islamic education, but uh, there is no separate subject for Quran. But in our school, we have started a separate uh, subject. One is called as Quran Karim, and the other is called Akhlaq Morals. Since the timing of the school is very long, especially for the girls we speak, because the boys can play football and do their sports activities outside the school. But the girls they can't do in uh, Najaf. That's why we have done more facilities for the girls. So also they should enjoy and do sport activities. So my thoughts on Najaf is that this is a much larger school than the one in Karbala with the same kind of volume of treatment need. Uh, one thing that's been really good here is we've been able to put a more preventative program in place for the children. So we apply fluoride every two or three months and there's been um, much more support from the teachers and the head teacher and the owner of the school uh, in really helping us um, get the kids to a stage where they can manage their own dental health. And we're not just treating problems, we're actually stopping them from happening in the first place. Um, Najaf is an amazing school over here, it's been here for quite a few years. It's got amazing facilities, there's two or three football pitches, the children look like they're having a good time and it's fulfilling for us to work in an environment uh, that supports us like this. What's also been good is that in Najaf, uh, we've had a few more dentists join us from Samara, so our team is much bigger to get a lot more treatment done and I've been able to share in all the other dentist experiences of what Samara was like also. Uh, seeing so many dentists uh, has also been an experience because they're from all over the world. So we have dentists from India, dentists from Tanzania, from Canada, and then finally from London. And we've all got different ways of managing our cases and different ways of managing our patients. And it's nice once again to share in these experiences and give the kids the best treatment possible. As I said before I began, I wanted to get out of the rat race of a regular work and this trip has definitely done that for me. And I feel it's something that I need to do regularly in the future to remind me of what our true aim in life really is. In that you can get stuck in your own ways, keeping the same thing. Rather than what can people do for me, it's what can I do for other people. And in turn by doing that, it will give us a greater sense of satisfaction and that's what I think I've learned most. That by helping other people, you become more content in yourself and more happy with your actions as you go through life. So in Karbala, the maximum number of patients we were doing at one time, sedation-wise, was four. In Najaf, we have seven beds set up. For an anesthesiologist, anywhere, your training is to actually focus on one patient at a time. Having more than one patient at a time, even two, is, you know, splitting my attention. Four was really kind of 
pushing the limit. Seven is a little bit hectic, to be honest with you. I would really love to find volunteers who can come and help so that we can have at least two types of uh, anesthesiologists uh, on these types of missions, because that's really what's needed. On one hand, it's very, very efficient and it's wonderful because we got so many kids done today. On the other hand, it takes a lot out of you to kind of try to focus on every child. However, I'm not alone, right? So Hasnain Duji has been doing this for many years and obviously he has his expertise in sedation as well. And then the uh, volunteers have been fantastic listening to what we, the feedback that we give them and so that they can help us provide the best sedation as well. I say it will change your life. You just have to do it. You just have to put your niya, you have to put your intentions, make your intentions pure and leave the rest to Allah. Find the time, book off the holidays from work or school and just go. Put your trust in Allah and you'll come out of it a different person, a better person. We're near these holy personalities in Najaf, in Karbala, the fact that we go to Samarra and, and Kazmiya as well. We get to do the work that uh, I know that they would have wanted us to do. We're helping the less fortunate, especially the, the orphans, which the Quran and the Ahlul Bayt have, have always extolled the Muslimin to, to really watch out for. It helps you grow as a person. It helps you appreciate everything that you have over there in the West. It helps you really put things into perspective, kind of readjust the way you think about things. And that for me is the way that you really grow uh, as a person. And uh, with the Niya obviously being to help and to spiritually uplift yourself towards Allah. I wish I did it sooner, you know? That's basically it. I've always believed that whenever we volunteer, we're not doing the kids the favor. The kids are doing us a favor by giving us their opportunity to serve them. If you really truly believe in that, it really is heartwarming. And whenever you see these orphans and you see them being happy when you give them something and you see the happiness in their faces, I think that speaks volume. There's no money that can replace that. We need all sorts of volunteers. When we start planning these trips, what we normally do from a dental perspective is for each dentist, we require two and a half other volunteers. We need volunteers to assist, we need volunteers to sterilize, we need volunteers to manage patients. Just being in the medical dental field has limited value. Actually, in some cases, those that are non-dental, non-medical have a greater value. In many cases, translators are, are, are worth a million bucks, as they say because without them in some of these countries, we could not work. My language skills are very limited. I speak English and a few Indian languages, but you know, if it comes to uh, Spanish or Arabic or Farsi or Afghani or Dari or whatever, I'm total lost. So those uh, translators are very, very helpful. So all sorts of volunteers, there's one, only one criteria for volunteer. They gotta be willing to work hard and smile. Today's program is we are gonna pray, have lunch, and then set up the uh, mental vision and medical clinics um, so that tomorrow morning we can get started. And then we need to get some rest because I'm tired. There's always anxiety involved in, as in a volunteering for the first time. I think two or three things that are, is quite helpful is one coming in with no expectations because as you come in with expectations then you may not be able to meet them. I think talking to other volunteers who've been previously is very, very helpful. So when meetings are organized for those volunteers in their own countries before they come, it would be very, very highly recommended to attend those and ask questions, etc., that you're feeling uncomfortable with. The other thing is to maybe pick an area or a, a, a trip that you're more comfortable going to that area. Maybe going to a war zone the first time is probably not the best idea. Going to a, a safer area like Peru or something, if there's a trip organized that way, would be probably a better way to go. منظمة جي كي اف جهودهم مشكورة في كل سنة يأتون ويعالجون الأيتام نعم العلاج في فترة أسبوع تقريبا هذه الفترة قصيرة لا تكفي للأيتام المتواجدين اللي عددهم 1200 يتيم قد تكون هناك حالات مرضية كثيرة ولكن جزاهم الله خير هناك دور كبير تحسن في الوضع الصحي لليتيم من ناحية العلاجات الموجودة وحقيقة شاهدت موقف إنساني للمنظمة المذكورة جي كي اف اهتمامهم الكبير باليتيم ووضع النفسي الكبير أيضا يتخوف فكيف هذا الصغير هناك وسائل جيدة وإنسانية يجلبون أدوات رسم ألعاب غيرها إحدى الأخوات من هذه المنظمة تعمل على تهدئة الطفل 
لكي لا يكون متألم أو يبكي أثناء العلاج حالة إنسانية جميلة جدا نأمل إن شاء الله في المستقبل وحسب إمكانيتهم أنه تكون عدد الأيام أكثر يكون الكادر عدد الكادر أكثر لكي يستطيعوا تغطية الحالات الموجودة لهؤلاء الأيتام When I do go, I should be the one thanking these orphans to allowing me to work with them. You know, it's it's uh, I find it's a, it's a personal gratification. I know it might be hard for people to understand that concept, but I really, really, truly believe it's the orphans or these people are doing us a favor by allowing us. I know in most cases they're hesitant. Mostly, most of the time, it's financial. Uh, other times they're scared to go to these uh, foreign places, they're not sure of their own safety. To all of those people, those, all the skeptics, is I would say to them, you need to come and experience it once. I would definitely love to. While I was in school, I actually did a project on where my father-in-law is from. Seeing the work that goes into it, the amount of people that are helped, it's pretty unbelievable. And the fact that these dentists don't go brag about what they do. Just put this on your plate. <laughs> What you yeah, right. This is what you eat. <laughs> I said that's what you eat. That's what you eat. <laughs> mm -hmm. I am a registered nurse and I am waiting for my kids to become a little bit older and I would love to be able to come go with him and Cindy and see what they do and see if I can bring some bring something to the table. You can tell people by what they do. In the Bible it says that you shall know people by their fruit. You know a tree by its fruit, you know people by their actions. So I think Hasnain is a genuine article, uh, a good model for people to live up to. But I have thought repeatedly, really one of the finest men I've ever met. بعد ما يخلص المخيم الأطباء من يطلعون فيصير عندنا تواصل إحنا من الطلاب شلونكم ماما ها شنو أخباركم شلون استفادتوا فكل واحد يكون عنده حلم إنه هو يصبح طبيب. أنا راح أصير طبيب أنا راح أصير مهندس أنا أريد أصير مهندس لأنه أريد أساعدهم بالأجهزة اللي يجيبوها يعني شفت أكو إنسانية جدا راقية بالتعامل الإنساني اللي قاعد يتعاملوا الأطباء يتعاملوا ويا الأطفال فد شيء خلاهم يحببون المهنة فأكيد كلهم قاعد يحلمون إنه أنا أصير طبيب أسنان وهذا يقول أنا أصير طبيب طبيب أطفال فالحمد لله والشكر أكو يعني عندهم بدينا نزرع بيهم الحلم والأمل إنه يصيرون بالمستقبل يعني في شيء إن شاء الله عظيم In terms of GKF, I think GKF is not an individual organization. It's made up of the, all the volunteers are part of GKF. And without them all, this organization doesn't function. It's not my organization, it's not your organization. I think the word our is probably the best word to use. It is an our organization. It's everybody is involved, everybody has a piece to play, and every piece is an important piece. And I think that is probably the most important thing about GKF. It's not a, a hierarchical organization, etc. Everybody has a role to play. And most play it really well. This is my chocolate stash. <laughs> You're a naughty dentist. <laughs> Dr. Devji, uh, I know he'll be upset if I say this. Uh, he's my personal hero. I see him as a very humble dentist who does this thing. Uh, I truly believe he does it just to earn the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has no personal motives in any of these things. My talks with him or my conversations with him He's very humble. He does not wish to take any credit for himself. Whenever it is, he wishes to have the credit for the whole group. Sad. Sad. Gotta go back home now. I know. <laughs> Are you like? uh, looking forward to next year. Next again. year, inshallah. Inshallah. More kids to treat, more work to do. Yeah. Gonna miss the place. <laughs> Hopefully, never ends. Yeah. Inshallah. Inshallah. Inshallah.